Low Blood TV back again with another exclusive powered by Talker Media as usual. Um, let me see how I'm gonna kick this one off. Um, sitting across from me is uh, one of our own Oakland legend. Um, it's crazy to take a trip back down memory lane. I was in CYA, and um, if you hold your headphone, your uh, your, your, your tape player right, your walkie-talkie right, or whatever the fuck it's called, I forgot, um, you can get 106 KMEL, you can get the um, radio station. Hmm. And um, for those who don't know, the YA I was in was in Stockton. So we used to listen to KMEL, um, and I think it was Friday nights, if I'm not mistaken. And um, I heard you on there freestyling. Yeah. It was like a competition. Um this before I even met you and all the shit. I heard you on there freestyling. And um, I think you won. I don't know. I remember you was on there freestyling. But this was many, many moons ago when I was a young kid. And uh, I'm like, damn, who is this nigga? And uh, they say North Oakland, woo -woo, 45th. I'm like, damn, I should know him. Um, then I got out and I met him. By the time I got out, uh, you already had your shit going with this. You was uh, you was lit. You was going crazy. Um, I remember standing on the block and watching um, you drive by in your yellow bus, and you had all the up and coming rappers on that motherfucker. And um, you was just driving through the town. I'm like, damn. This before I was even rapping. I'm like, damn. I need to be on that bus. It looked lit. Um, but um, presenting to some and introducing to others, Mr. Fab. How you doing, bro? <laughs> what an intro, man. I appreciate that. Nah, blood, it's been moves, man. Um, it's been moves, but currently at this time, man, I'm good, man. My spirit is good. Family is good. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm happy about, you know, what has happened. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited about what is to happen. Okay, great, great, great. Um, just to get a little history about yourself, where did the um, Mr. Fab come from? Where did the name come from? When we was kids, me and my homies was like, some of us play hoop, some of us play football. But one thing that we all had in common, we was like the pretty boys, young fly niggas rock with all the bras and whatever. Right, right. And uh, the crew was the FAB crew. And um, of course, you know, when you're young, substance evades you a lot. So we would just have a, you know, what the name stood for at the time. And I told my brother, I was like, yeah, man, I'm this who I am. He was like, man, have a name that creates substance that represent what you represent. And so the acronym of Mr. Fab is money is something I always have, so stay forever after bread. And it's something that I've taken to heart of the hustle, of being able to be an entrepreneur. And with entrepreneurialism, continue to exert that uh, through everything that I do. Right, 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 right. So um, I remember... Um when you first started doing the dope era clothing thing and when you got your store on um, 45th and Market. And uh, I remember you saying, like, blood, it's not much, but it's a headquarters. Like, it's somewhere a nigga can be. From then to now, um, to having one of the um, biggest stores in downtown Oakland, how does that make you feel from then to now? Like, just thinking over the shit. It lets you know that growth is possible. Mm -hmm. And... In these days and times, especially with the social media and cyberbullying, the pressure of starting something always evades us. Right, right, right. And it's always the second guessing because we just don't want to start simultaneously. We want to be able to have something established. You got artists that don't want to put a video out because they don't have a channel to put it on. Mm. So they be like, man, I don't want to just get 100 views, man. I'm, nah, man, you got to start somewhere. And so that small spot in the infancy stages of what we have now, I'm thankful for that. Right, right, right. Because right. not only did it teach me how to deal with people, it taught me how to deal with the politics of, of, of neighborhood, mm -hmm. the politics of uh, financial disputes, of pricing, and just merchandising. And I learned the game right, through right, trial right. and error. Right, so right. to go from there to actually, as you say, have a store downtown right now, that's a, a, a pretty big a bigger headquarters. Right, right, definitely, definitely. It, it, it shows the possibilities, man. And if anything, I want, not only for myself, but for others that are watching it, as I lead by example, I'm setting a blueprint. Right, 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 right. I'm setting a blueprint for entrepreneurial. Definitely. During the um, George Floyd riots, um, I watched 
well, I didn't watch personally. Um, I just seen every store there or every business damn near in that area get vandalized um, from the stores next door to you, everything. And I just see your store. Nobody touched it. Like, um, it was like they just seen it. It was like, nah, that's fat. Like, this fat. How does that make you feel that you have that much respect? Mind you, these people was vandalizing police buildings, courthouses. They didn't give a fuck. But it's like when they came to the dope era store, it was like kryptonite or some shit like that. Man, it was a blessing. I won't go out there and be like, oh, they knew better and things right, like that. Right, you right. know, I won't put myself on no level like that. It was a blessing. Mm -hmm. Our presence was one of the reasons we actually stayed there and we were, you know, open through the wee hours of night. Um, our presence was there. Um, my uncle was, you know, he he held oops all night, the rest of the team and the camaraderie, but more so they knew that we were advocates of what was going on. Mm. We were in the streets. We were doing the marching and speaking at the rallies. And mm -hmm. we were, uh, for a small glimpse of time, we were representing of the people that have been hung for the people that have been assassinated that have been murdered right. we represent that and we're a voice of that right, right, um, right so by the grace of god and good fortune of the people we rallied behind the people and they rallied behind us with a uh with a hymn of protection mm -hmm. and we were able to escape the vandalism that's dope that's dope um your backpack giveaways how the hell you be pulling this off man i seen steph curry out there hooping one time um Draymond Green pulled up. Um, if I'm not mistaken, KD pulled up or something. What? Uh, Clay, Clay pulled Clay, up. Clay, yeah, Clay, yeah. Clay, Clay. How? Like what? Like what? What? How? Like relationships. Okay. Um. Right now, your your discussions. I won't even call it a podcast. Mm -hmm. You have discussions with friends, with associates, with mm -hmm. artists, with. Uh, those that you have relationships with and, and those that, you know, that have grown up off your music. So they have a respect for you when you reach out to them and they come, mm -hmm. you know, um, our relationship for me to be able, I hate driving. Right. I hate being in a car. So for me to be like, when we get in here, we get there, I'm there. And, and that's all it is, man. Um, when you a good person and when you have good intentions or you hold true to your word of, of who you are and what you are, um, you'll get support. You'll mm -hmm. get support from some influential people. And I've just been, I've been able to maintain great relationships. I'm still best friends with my best friend since kindergarten. Mm, that's deep. That's you know deep. what I'm saying? Still to this day. That's deep. So um, maintaining relationships and friendships is something that's, it's key to me. Mm -hmm. And with those athletes, with uh, other influential people, that's something that I, I hold dear to my heart. And um, to answer your question, by maintaining those relationships and being fruitful and being honest, I've been able to uh, to continue to pull these things off. And when I ask uh, for appearances, hey, man, they're, they're more than obliged, and I'm happy. That's raw. Dope era. Dope era. Dope era. Um, is it an acronym? Do it stand for something? Do it sure. mean it? For sure. Write that down to me. Um, for many people that may not know what the dope era actually was, the dope era was a time where – um, in the 60s, we had, especially in our city, we had the highest level of social intelligence for the black social pride. What that okay. means is the Black Panthers were yeah. implementing what a hierarchy and social relevance of the black identity was. Mm -hmm. That became a threat to America. Right, definitely. It was so much of a threat to America that in the 70s, Dr. Huey P. Newton was considered a public enemy. Definitely. Cointel Pro. Through Quintel Pro. Right. Now, a public enemy, when we think of public enemy, we think of Adolf Hitler, we mm -hmm. think of Saddam Hussein, mm -hmm. we think of uh, Arafat, and a lot of these other political people that the media has made them, has demonized them. Uh, and we look at why Huey Newton mm -hmm. was on this list. He became a threat to the central intelligence of America because he did for his people. Right, 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 right. So what happened with that Come the 70s, here comes the 80s, we have to destroy the central unit of intelligence. Mm. Our greatest way to do that is we've created this drug called crack cocaine. Mm. And we're going to flood it in every inner city that has a high level of social intelligence mm. and black supremacy where it's prominent. Right, right, right. Damn, damn. So we destroy Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. We destroy Oakland, California. We destroy Baltimore, New York, and we flood these cities with this crack. 
which becomes a drug epidemic. Mm -hmm. Then you have a president whose whole campaign was about the war on drugs, drugs which yeah. latter became known as the dope era. Mm. If you remove- Was every, that um, Nixon or Reagan? Reagan, right? You had Reagan. Reagan. Okay. You had Reagan. So Nixon was Watergate. Watergate that was like yeah, the okay. espionage of spies and stuff. Yeah, so sir. Reagan was, his whole thing was uh, the war on drugs. That's where the saying his wife created, just say no. Yeah, just say dare, right? Dare. Okay, and all yeah. of these programs and then just say no. So they created a whole campaign and called it the dope era. Uh -huh. Now, everything in that era was dope except for the dope. Right. What I wanted to do and what we've been able to do is refurbish those times and remove the dope. So the acronym for Dope Era stands for Developing Opportunity for People to Evolve. Mm. And when you do so, everyone rises above. Say that again. Developing, Developing opportunity, opportunity for People, people to, to Evolve. evolve. Okay. And everyone rises above. As you and I talked about off camera, we may not grow as fast as some would like us to grow, but we're growing. Mm -hmm. So there are things that we're going to come into acknowledgement of mm -hmm. at the right time. Right, 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 right. And we just continue to keep evolving. Right. Um, because of the name, do you think that, like, um, blocked you from getting certain alley hoops and shit? Like, blocked you from getting certain, uh, what you call that, uh, placements? I think in the infancy stages, a lot of people didn't understand how to accept it. Right. The beauty of that is we're not looking for placements. Mm. I never once sold our clothes in any other store out. Mm. We did it on our own. We did it out of our own stores, out the trunk of the cars. Definitely. You know, uh, my brother G Field, um, live in peace, uh, forever a memory that will continue to, you know, be, be, be. I miss my brother, but me and dude did a lot of stuff, man. We beat up them roads. Right, right. I remember. City, city to city, out the trunk. I remember. And, um, we def definitely turned down a lot of people saying, no, nah, we don't want to sell our stuff in your cl in your store. Right, 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 right. You know, right. the Mannies and all these other people that had clothing stores, we were just like, no, nah, we just want to do it our way. I, I never bought a pair of Louis at the Gucci store. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? So we wanted to create our own, our own, our place, our own headquarters that people would come to. Mm -hmm. And we've done that. Right. But, um, and, 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 and a different angle of answering the question, I feel like there are people that have, frowned upon the clothing line because they didn't understand it. Right, right, right. Just and they, because of the name. Yeah, and yeah. they looked at it like, oh, no, you can't wear that. You know, I've definitely been told at certain arenas, uh, not not our arenas like performance arenas, but in areas, in, in, in spaces, uh, do you have another shirt? Huh. And um, I would have to break down the acronym to them. Right, and right. Uh, entirely, I would, uh, you know, it would be my option either to accept or decline. But there are certain places that I've walked away because they wouldn't allow me to wear dope here. Right. Um, we're going to bring it to the music for a second. Mm, the hyphy movement. Um, you was one of the front runners of that movement, of that era. Um, what was hyphy like in your time? Hyphy in my time was... Before the music, Hyphy was going to the house party in West Oakland and knew that it was finna be some fights. Right, 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 right. Knew that you was finna see some Peacoats, some Gap hoodies, and smell some black and mouth smoke. Right, right, right. Watch right. Lil Lucas and Lonnie dancing. Right, and right, you feel me? Right, right. He was cutting it up and it was gonna be turned up. And it was, it was, it was, when you see it, you're like, man, these niggas Hyphy, man. You know, coming in here tripping, bro. And uh, we took that that energy that was expressive and we put it through music. Um, I think a lot of people put me at the front of it because of, you know, um, I gained a lot of notoriety during those times, but you know, the Keeks and the Dre's and a lot of those other people, Keek most definitely though. Definitely, for that sure. That brought, brought it to the world. Um, we were able to take the energy that was, that we would describe from the negatives mm -hmm. and then just have some fun with it, man. And, Hey man, um, I enjoyed it though, blood. I, I enjoyed it just based off the fact of it helped change my financial status. Right. So we're gonna dig deeper. A lot of people say Hyphy fucked off the Bay Image. Um, I was one of them people at first, but I was. I also grew up in that era, and um, me and um, Chris Lockett had this conversation. He was. Um, he was uh, uh, sitting in the chair you sitting in a few weeks back. And um, 
he was basically saying, um, I didn't take you as the hyphy kind of guy. And um, I wasn't a hyphy rapper, but nigga, the side shows and the ease, the nigga ghost riding, the, um, you know, old school popping on the, the water. Like, I was really a part of that. Like, it was fun. But then again, I think it f fucked off, like, the image they had on us. I think um, even now. I think they're still like, um, like oh, all them niggas do is ghost ride and pop pills. Like, you know, I think that um, it kind of gave us a sour taste in some people's mouth. I think digging deep into it, everything derived from stuff that happened on the curve. Right. We talk ghost ride it. We go back to the infancy stages of Creed coming through Rest tech. Peace, Critty, bro. In the van. Jumping out dancing. Niggas like, who is that? Like, oh, that's yeah, the ghost yeah, town yeah. niggas. That's how they drive. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Oh, that's ghost riding. Right, right, right. Before it was the riding with the stolen bike that you went to Alameda and you yeah. stole the bike and now you ghost riding one hand on the right. road. You know what I'm That was the original ghost riding. Right, right. And then you look at the young nigga, hella hyphy at the party going crazy. All we did was paint that image musically. Right. And I think that people, at the times, if you frowned upon it, you may have realized that Damn, we was tripping, huh? Mm -hmm. But I told a person, would you rather me get on record and lie about my lifestyle? Right, 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 right. Would you rather me get on records and mm. talk about how I'm shooting and how I, I ain't never sold dope in my life? Mm. I ain't never shot a nigga in my life. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Would you rather me get on there and lie like that? Right, 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 right. You know what I'm saying? About, you know, you listen to people with imaginary pistols, imaginary guns, and we'd be like, bro, we know you. Right, <laughs> for sure. Like, bro, we know you, bro. For like, sure. where, where did this come from? Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? People get on their, um, man, they get on their Mark Twain, man. These folks, you know, they get on this record and they just write and they, they create these images and then they start believing it. Mm -hmm. I said, would you rather me? Because people are like that, man, that shit was a gimmick. I'm like, bro, that was really my life. Right, right, right. I was really right, at right. the side shows. Definitely. We really was at the house parties. We really was turning up. I really was with Dre and going on the road. Like, this is what we was doing. Right, 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 right. Would right, you rather right, me right. lie about that? Right, right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Would you, would you rather me get on here and, 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 and lie about some other music? What would be the gimmick? It's only a gimmick if it ain't your life. This is what we really was doing. Right. And we had a whole... A uh, 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 audience of people that was doing the same thing. That's right. why it was so big. They related to it. Mm -hmm. Years later, we just did a show in, in in the bottoms a couple nights ago. Sold out. Right, definitely. A hyphy night. Sold out. And so, um, I ain't gonna lie. I still uh, be reminiscing on them times. Like, um, it wasn't a lot of gun violence. I mean, it was. But it wasn't but highlighted it, like no, that. No, no, because really? it's like Okay, you can pull up and bounce out um, in the east comfortably. What's up, my niggas, man? You feel me? Uh, you will have three, four hundred motherfuckers on the corner of 90th and Bancroft. Yeah, niggas got straps on them, but niggas wasn't shooting each other. Right. Um, the clubs, the Sweet Jimmies, on, the Mingles. Club 17. Club 17. Um, it was all a time. The button ups, remember? Come on. The button ups. Uh, it was all a. It was a great time in history, and I still reminisce. But um, me being a rapper and trying to um, show people now nah, it's more to the bay than just you know, like you said, nigga. We here we pee. Um, you know, it's a Black Panthers come from us. Right. Uh, it's a lot of great shit that come out the bay, and um, it's not just that hyphy movement. And um, I will try. I be trying to explain that to people, even through my music, and. Um, I think it's coming back around. I don't think I know. I see it's coming back around. Um, people still, a lot of people still get their lingo from the Bay. Right. A lot of people still um, come through the Bay. The Bay is a big market. And I had this conversation with other people. I think if we need to get back to ourselves because for a few years, you know, we didn't drift it off and became followers when we was leaders. And um, now we're getting back to ourselves. Like these youngsters creating a whole different sound. And um, I salute it. Um, I'm blessed to still be here. You know, um, I might not be popping as hard as I once was, but I'm blessed to still be here. You get what I'm saying? Exactly. And um, yeah, I think it's coming back around. We are one of the most influential areas in the world. Oakland has a population of at this time, Oakland had a population of 300,000. The Black Panthers had chapters in Africa. Right, right. In China. Cuba. 
Cuba. Right. Japan. That's influence. The hyphy movement. Your biggest song is a hyphy song. Definitely. Hell yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Facts. Yeah. Like, Facts. Third Facts. World is a, like, you, Free Boski is the, 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 that's the biggest song. Like, when I, I, Short was having a show and I told Short, you got to pull a little blood out. And this at a time, me and you wasn't even seeing eye to eye. Right. But as men, as brothers, as understanding how can we continue to help each other evolve, mm -hmm. not just musically, but as men, we continue to help each other evolve. I'm like, you got to pull him out. Right, right, right. right. He's like, what's the record? I'm like, watch when the record come on. You know what I'm saying? Because the music is, this is what we, this is what resonates with us. But as you said, it's a full circle. We have to also take into consideration this. The internet has made the world one city. Mm, say that again. The internet has made the world one, one city. city. Right. So we can't be upset that certain people have outside influences because we all got the same phone in our hand and we all looking at what's getting the attention. Mm -hmm. What's getting the the flu the influence? What's getting the views? Right, right, right. Do you think um, we'll be in a better situation if we were in the um, streaming era? Of course, definitely. Huh? What? <laughs> yeah. Come on, bro. You got to think, bro. We come in a time where LimeWire was coming, mm -hmm. YouTube was coming, like it was just coming up. But we come from where you might not have that many views, but everybody know you. Right, 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 right. You know what I'm right, saying? You right. might, your shit might be getting bootlegged somewhere or, and you be like, damn, I ain't seeing nothing from this. We not from, we not coming from that streaming era. Right, 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 right. We like, we just missed it. Right, And right. then we also just missed the selling hella records era. Remember in the Bay where you be like, you know what I'm saying? You was, we was seeing mess doing 100,000. Mm, yeah. Selly sell two, 300,000. Mm -hmm. Like, damn, these niggas selling records. Right, right. We just missed that. Cause they start burning CDs when mm -hmm. we came. They had line wire, so we right. We like that middle child of right. technology era. So if you ask, do I feel like we would be much further financially and 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 the legendary status? Yeah, but to times, I feel like we fared. We fared just well. Look where we are now. Right. right Look right, who we are. Right. right we can right. still walk around in our city. We don't got a tuck tail. We don't need a hundred niggas deep to be going right. somewhere. We can move around. Mm -hmm. We respect it. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, it's a blessing to me. How do you feel about um, Jay Stalin and Livewire? Stalin is, when I say, I think people use the word brother too freely now. Mm -hmm. I mean, because we just came in that, in that era, you know, that era now where it's like, oh, that's brother, 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 you know, and brother be hella fake sometimes, right? But when I say, Dude is really my brother. Mm -hmm. Like, I really love dude. I love dude because we came up together. Mm -hmm. I get off stage at Mingles, he go on. I'm hyping him, he hyping me. Right, right, right. I'm going to his show, he going to my show. Right, 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 right. We at the house party. He on the bike with Jazz. <laughs> you feel me? He pulling up with Dame and they on the, he on the head handlebars. Right, right. I'm at Tech, he pulling up at Tech. With we, CDs. With CDs. Yeah. We watched each other. We watched each other grow. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and he'll tell you. On a tuck tuck, I'm really that nigga therapist. Like he called me four in the morning. Yeah. Bro, my mama, bro, woo, woo, what's up? And we talk. We talk till the sun come up. Right, right. Man, I'm so proud of what that dude has done, man. And he did it with no major budget. At all. No major budget. At all. He did it like, oh, let me introduce. My brother, blood. Let me introduce Filthy. Let me introduce Stevie. Let me, you know how many people he introduced to the game? Yeah. And people don't give him credit for that. Not at all. So like, I'm doing, and, and this is breaking news. This is breaking news right here. I'm doing uh, the Dope Era Awards in December. Mm. And um, I definitely want to give him a Lifetime Achievement Award. That's raw. Just um, that acknowledgement. I tell people all the time too, without Jay Stalin, it wouldn't be no third worlds. Um, 
It wouldn't be no FODs. It wouldn't be no um, shady nations like um, Stalin. Um, Stalin shared his platform with us at a time when he didn't have to, or when he didn't need to. Um, I remember recording at his um, girlfriend's house and shit. And it does. Right. Exactly. <laughs> right off East 14. <laughs> it does. So, um, just kudos to Stalin. I just wanted to uh, bring that out there. Salute Stalin, because you know you grew up in the era. He did. He did what Jay Z did. Mm. You had state property, had Dipset, mm -hmm. had the Young Guns. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You had all of these other artists that's from the Rockefeller tree. Mm -hmm. And if you ask me, that's who Jay was to me. You feel me? Definitely. Jay was able to do that. And he would always, I was I'm like, bro, I was like, bro, I can't do that CEO shit, bro. You be right. doing it, bro. You dealing with all them different emotions and woo-woo. It's like, bro, I just let niggas do what they do, bro. But right. you know, we all family at the end of the day. We gonna go through it. And I commend him, man. And, and even outside of music, he's one of the greatest fathers that I've ever witnessed that For I've sure. had a chance to sit up and learn from, man. For um, sure. So like we say, man, big shout out to Jay, man. What made you start getting in the jewelry? I see you been tweaking with your jewelry heavy. I was one of the first ones, like from that new wave, to create innovative jewelry. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Before niggas was like, you know, back then it was just you had a rolly chain. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. you know what I'm saying? You got went to spits, you got your rolly chain, you got when well, you was cool. Um, not to cut you off, but the iconic piece ever, Mr. Fab. Mr. Fab piece. With was the crazy. color all that was one of the most iconic pieces, like Mr. Fab it, piece. It, the Mr. Fab is a piece. And Gucci Bart. Gucci Bart was crazy. That's 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 when I, you know what I Gucci mean. Gucci Bart was neck crazy. Neck, like, yeah. We did the we did the A's piece, did the yellow bus piece, did the uh I remember the yellow bus the Yellow A's Bus piece. piece, did the uh did the Mr. Fab piece, did the um a few son other pieces, pimp, the, the son of a pimp piece. Um you know, jury is uh synonymous with, you know, the character of a person. Mm -hmm. You know, I think sometimes back in the day. When we would look at some of the ballers and some people, you know, would see B folks and B folks had the rawest, he had the fattest roly chain and he had mm -hmm. the roly, like, you know what I'm saying? I remember just being a kid looking at him like, damn, he's a boy. You know what I'm saying? He a boy, yeah. or OG Banson from Ghost Town. And you would watch these other dudes, they would have these pieces, mm -hmm. what they would represent. You know what I'm saying? MA, what, what he had, all the whole, the whole A team had their pieces. To us, that was like, you know, that was a sign of, Oh, you handling your business, right, you doing right, your thing. Right, right, right. So um, I got into it, but at, at this age now, man, you know, if, if I do it, it's just, it's just to do it. it. Ain't really, I'm not really passionate about it no more. Like right. I'm, I'm even more freely just without wearing jewelry because I know what it come with and right. make you a target. Definitely. Like nigga, I done been robbed before. I done been, you know what I'm saying? I done been up under it. Definitely, definitely. Um, me too. Shit, it happened. Right, when yes, you it, shit. it happened. Um, it's, it's it don't a make chance you less of a man. man. It it shit happens. The game, um, man. You know, robbers get robbed for so sure. Shit happens. Killers I get see, killed. Exactly. Um, I see you tweaking too. You just uh, opened up a club. So sure. opened up the club. How was that? Uh, Desi's. 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 How was that? Mom's name. Uh, Mom's always wanted a club. Mm -hmm. Mom's always wanted. That was always her dream. And, and as I sit back and I reflect on it now, when you're younger, you don't realize how driven you are to do something until you sit back and you reflect. My mom would always say, you know, baby, when you buy me a club, this is what I'm gonna have in it, this is what I'm gonna do. And she would plant that in my mind. Mm -hmm. She would plant those small things in my mind, not if, when. When, yeah. And the time came and uh, I was able to pull it off, man. And the first thing that I thought about when it was like, what you gonna name it? I had already had it in my mind, it's yeah. Desi's. Right, definitely. It's my mama's spot. What's your regrets, bro? Not a lot of regrets. Um, I think a man that doesn't have any regrets, doesn't have any lessons to learn from. Mm. Um, I think being so arrogant, being mm. young, mm. you know. Speak on it. Very arrogant. Um, but being arrogant came from a complex. It came from being overlooked. Mm -hmm. It came from knowing that you got something and people not embracing it like that. Right. It'll frustrate right, you. Right. Um, definitely. I done had them type of conversations sure. with you. Definitely. And um, being looked over, especially when you grinding and you putting your all into something, being looked over as a man, um, that shit hurt. Man, it hurt. It's hurtful. Man, and hurt. especially when you know, like, you supposed to be in a better situation than, on, you know. Well, you got to think, bro. 
out of everybody that come from where we come from, bro, I'm the only person that has ever been banned mm. at the height of my career in the prime. Do you feel like speaking on that? I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I'm not ashamed of it anymore. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I did, um, being young, being stubborn, being hard headed, um, you make some decisions. You make some decisions and some choices that you you sit back and be like, damn, I went and I jumped over. I just signed with Atlantic. I signed a distribution deal with Atlantic. They were gearing up to get behind me and be very supportive of what we were doing. Mm -hmm. um, I think at the time I had about seven to eight songs on the radio. It's booming. Booming, yeah. Um, and an opportunity had presented itself for me to go have a radio show on another station. And um, without reporting to council, that means basically just sitting up yeah, and having you, you know, bigger than the program. Yeah, thinking yeah. you bigger than the program. Um, where I feel like we could have had a baraza and we sat down and we could have talked about it, mm -hmm. or the meeting of the men's, and you know, avoiding that situation. I jumped into something, and um, it cost me. Uh, it cost me my position on the totem pole. Right. You know, um, I was banned from. Camille for 13, 14 years. Wow. You know, and wow. being 14 years of the backlash of that is fat fell off, blood this, he ain't that no more. Well, well, it's over for him. The hyphy shit did. But in actuality, I was the new voice of that movement. Mm -hmm. If you cancel the voice, there's no one to speak about what's going on. Right. So it's easy for something to fade. So all of that fading falls on my shoulders. Yeah. All of that backlash, all of that. And imagine being 23, 24 years old, having to deal with that. Right. Having to deal with Mac Dre just died, so now you got this whole label you got on your back. Having to deal with your mama dying from cancer. Mm. Having to deal with you just had a daughter. Mm. Nigga, nobody taught us how to get through stuff like that. I dealt with a lot. I dealt with a lot of depression. A lot of times where it was yeah. it was tough, bro, and I couldn't go cry about it. I didn't have no room to vent. Right, right. right I didn't have right. no room to say, "Oh man, I gotta." Oh man, they banned me on war. Man, you gotta get the yeah. job done, nigga. Yeah, take that shit on the chin. Man, you gotta take it on the Daughter chin. Daughter can't nigga. eat no tears. Come on, my nigga. Yeah. Ain't, ain't no ain't no cushions. Ain't no crutches, nigga. Go go do what you gotta do to get through it. And so, I dealt with it, bro. I dealt I dealt with it. I dealt with it and it was difficult. And I'd be a liar if I say that it didn't hurt. It didn't hurt. It hurt hella bad. It hurt because it's like, bro, all these niggas saying I did this and I did that and I'm getting blamed for this and I'm getting blamed for that. And it's like, y'all not even seeing my side. Right, 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 right. Y'all right. not even seeing what I was up against. But God don't make no mistakes. Right. You know? I'm going to um, drop this shit in low for a minute. And um, we're going to get on some real town shit. Some real town shit. Um, by you being fat, you're a staple in the community on some um, positive shit. For sure, for sure. But on the flip side of that, by you being fat, you're into politics. Even if you don't want to be in them. You're in them because you know it's Oakland. Um, how does that make you feel? Because um, just to speak on me, yo, um, disagreement. It was a disagreement because um, I, I expected you to be um, more on my side with um, with a situation, and. Um, I was kind of upset, but I had to think like it's really not his business. But at the end of the day, I call this nigga brother. You know, I, I asked this nigga for advice. So um, I was thinking, not conversating though, like, damn, Fab was supposed to do this, do this, that, and the other. But um, after um, I came to my senses, I'm like, it ain't that nigga fault. Like, that nigga, you feel me? He doing him. But a lot of shit like that fall in your lap. You get what I'm saying? Um, you got this store. Everybody pull up to the store. Rather, uh, let's use the um, the cousins. Say, uh, 
cousin A and cousin B. You feel me? Cousin A and cousin B both pull up to the store, but cousin A and cousin B ain't. Cousin A don't get along with cousin B. You get what I'm saying? But being fab, cousin C, you in the middle of that shit. You feel me? I'm not about to stop fucking with cousin A because of how you feel, cousin B, and I'm not about to stop fucking with cousin B because of how cousin A feel. Um, how do you navigate through that? Because I know you deal with that a lot. <laughs> More than often, man. Um, it's extremely hard. Mm -hmm. It's extremely difficult. Um, I wish for all of us to have understanding, B. Mm -hmm. And it'd be times where you be wanting to jump in and be like, man, bro, y'all, come on, bro. Like, y'all niggas tripping, bro. Come on, bro. Mm -hmm. But it'd be too deep. Right, right, right. And as I get older, I learn that we have to stop expecting to see the fixed version of ourselves and others. We may have healed from some shit. Mm -hmm. We may learn from some things that we've gone through on how to assess certain situations, but you got to give some other people time because mm -hmm. maybe they ain't ready for that. Right, 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 right. Maybe they ain't ready to go to grandma's house. Auntie's still tripping. Right, 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 right. But we having Thanksgiving, it's like, cause you really not finna come? Right, 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 right. And the integrity of family can't be sacrificed for individualism. And what I mean by that is, no matter what you going through, you ain't bigger than the program. Hmm. You ain't bigger than the program. I didn't put myself in some situations where it was like, Right. I ain't even put myself in this. It's just because of who I am, mm -hmm. just because where I'm from. Nigga, fat, we on you. Y'all on me. Right, 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 right. For real? Like, okay. But, yeah, nigga, you be with them North Oakland niggas. You be with, 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 have you be with the suckers. Everybody the suckers nowadays, if we say that. So, there's no right answer for it, B. Like, I, I, don't, I can't give you a, a truthful explanation of how how to avoid it or how not to. I just hope that in time, mm. members mm -hmm. that are involved can find a perspective to see all blood ever wanted it was all of us to sit down at Granny House. Right, right. But do you think um, some shit be too deep? Like, some shit be too deep. Right. Some shit you got to get out of your business. Right, okay, cool. Probably you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some shit. Like, with Cousin A and Cousin B, this where niggas get themselves involved. Mm -hmm. Cousin A post something on the Instagram you cousin C, you posted on there laughing with the ha ha's and the he he's and well, well cousin B looking at it like, bro, that's how you feel. Right, 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 right. But mind your business. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Like, and I tell people, niggas like, bro, I just commented, bro, that wasn't your place. You knew what was going on. You knew what was going on. Bro, get out them niggas' business, bro. Yeah, definitely. I slide niggas DMs all the time. Hey, bro, you race that, bro. Get out them niggas' business, bro. Right, right. Like, definitely. you feel me? Like, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and I got love for you, so that's the only reason why I'm in your business. But break it out them niggas' business, bro. Like I've learned to, man, I'm not, I'm not commenting on niggas' pictures. I'm not commenting on none of that, right? Cause that involve you. Right, 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 right. That right. involve you, man. Get out them niggas' business, man. And if they, you know, and, and pray that they can come to a common grounds of understanding. But if not, make it out their business, man. Yeah, for sure. Or accept whatever come with it. Definitely, definitely. Do you think um, social media in general? Um, Fucked off a lot of shit, like that shit, like the devil. Like, you get what For I'm sure. saying? It's and, both. Uh -huh. It's a yin, yang, yang, but that's life. Right, right. You could use it to your good. Like, I use it for the awareness. If we throw in an event in the community, we having a, uh, a say to children or we having a scholarship program, and I could put it out there, and somebody who may be from London who has nothing to know about Oakland, they just love the, the philanthropy that we're doing. They donate something. Mm. That's a positive. Mm -hmm. Or it could be. Niggas who looking to come disturb the peace, looking like, oh, them niggas going to be over there? Oh, we own them. Right, right. We sliding through. What time they say they going to pull up? Right, right, so right. It's so a, it's, a, it's a gift and a curse. Right, right. You just got to, you know, you got to use it more for the gifting. Right. Um, I will see you post something, right? You will post something, um, you know, when you go on your rants, um, your good rants, not no bad rants, when you just, you know, just speaking that good shit um, on some poetic shit, just on some positive shit. I'll see you um, post that. And um, that shit probably, you know, get a couple of likes. And then I can see you post some other shit and that'll shoot up. Controversy. Exactly. People love controversy. Uh, Fucked up times. 
Right, 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 right. You could be doing something talking about how your podcast is helping brothers come together and end their problems and 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 and, and growing and a network may want to come give you HBO, Cinemax may want to come put Lil Blood TV and take it worldwide, Revo Television. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Whatever we claim, we claiming that. Niggas be like, oh, shit, cool. But let you do a podcast talking about, oh, yeah, I'm on this nigga. Well, this nigga could never get on my platform. Right, right, right. They going to be on you. It's a thousand comments. Mm -hmm. We got to understand that. We got to know what we up against. Mm -hmm. Like I tell the people all the time. I'm one of the only very few people from our city, man, that got a, a name from being positive. Right, right, right. Definitely. Definitely. Like for doing positive stuff. Um, I seen you, um, um, I think you had a meeting with the police. Or you yes, took sir. a pitch, something you did. Um, like I'm a real straight nigga. Right. Like, nigga, I good, nigga. I done took pictures with the police. Right. Like, good, straight. Um, and I seen people um crucify you for that. Yes, sir. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, these are internet people. Cause any quote unquote real nigga know what you're doing. Like, um, I'm not against the police at all. Um, I think we should obey the laws of the land. I'm not against that at all. But when I seen them try to crucify you for that, I'm like, what the fuck? Like that don't you know that it just it just lets you know, like you got young cats. See, if you got somebody that don't like you mm -hmm. and they got a narrative that they want to push. They're gonna utilize that. Right, 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 right. That's a good way to segue to them to get you to be biased towards you. Right, 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 right. And then you got these young kids that the average young kid don't know nothing about paperwork, don't know nothing about nothing. They all they can say is one person said he was snitching, oh now he's running with he, it. He, yeah. he told. Yeah, yeah. Nigga don't know how to read no paperwork. Nigga don't know how to I'm like, well, what are you talking about? Like, bro, did you see the paperwork? They don't know. So how you just so when you see somebody say, oh, man, that nigga take a picture with the police. He working for the police. Right. That's. <laughs> bro, I'm a community leader, bro. Definitely. I'm a person that's outside involved with trying yeah. to get, trying to end recidivism, which is the reentry back into back and forth to jail for, right. for our people. I'm a person that's trying to, that utilizes my job space to have youth employment. Right, right, right. There, right. Every week, there's three, four different youngsters that's going through the system that comes work at my, at my stores. They're, you know what I'm saying? They're transitioning of that community governing, mm -hmm. community policing. Why wouldn't I sit down with the police officer, the chief of police that's from Oakland? Mm -hmm. He's from the West. He's from West Oakland. Right, right, right. Who has a, a, a chance to say, I can change the infrastructure of what y'all been knowing for the police to be doing. Right, definitely. Because I'm from here. It's definitely. So if I pull a little blood over and I look, I'll be like, oh, what's up, little blood? Right. Oh man, you can go on here, man. I thought you were one. I know you ain't a nuisance or problem. Right, right. Go my it's crazy you said that for my birthday party, they were trying to cancel it the day of the party. And um um the promoter from West Oakland, he's from the block, um, knows the chief of police, That's which from the neighborhood. Yeah. And um, you know, he told him, like, man, this this nigga ain't been in trouble in years. Like, I called Mook for, for him. Yeah, like, Mook and Mook, I, uh, man, we'll, we'll call Mook. He want to talk about the party. Right, 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 for right, sure. right, right. Like, so, they, <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, and he like, you know, Mook, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to allow it to happen. I'm going to call the gang unit, allow it to happen. But, you know, this is, you know, if you can, if you saying okay to this, I'm with you. But if you fuck up, I'm going to tax it off. Yeah, I'm going to tax your ass for it. And um, it went well. Um, it went more than well. Went more than well. You brought out um, a lot of people, man. Yes, it was, it was, and it was, it was a parlay. For sure. It was a parlay. It was um, no enemies in there with each other. It wasn't no bad vibes. It wasn't no fucked up stairs. It was a parlay. And um, actually, one of the polices who was control patrolling the area, he blood, I fuck with your music. Just you feel me? Like, real thorough shit. Like, right. You know what I mean? So, yeah, um, I agree with you on that. I definitely agree with you on that. Um not to have you here all night. Um, what would you tell the eighteen-year-old Fab right now? Stay focused, mm. and it's gonna happen. It's not gonna happen when you want it to happen, though. Mm -hmm. The eighteen-year-old Fab wanted to be popping at twenty-two and wanted to be rich and famous, but he didn't understand what came with that. Mm. He didn't understand the responsibility that it took to deal with people, mm -hmm. the leadership qualities. The humbleness, mm -hmm. the thankfulness. There's a difference between being humble and grateful. Certain people want you to be humble. Mm -hmm. 
so they could run over you. Yeah. They could walk over you. Use your sweetness for weakness. Yeah. It's like, just because I'm grateful, that don't mean I'm humble. I'm grateful and I'm thankful that you appreciate me and I'm appreciative of that. But you're not finna treat me no less than what I'm treating myself and I'm treating myself like a king. Right, 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 right. You know what I'm saying? And so I would tell him, be mindful of those who you share your secrets with. Be mindful of those who you share your blessings with. Mm -hmm. But be kind. Be thoughtful. Arrogant. Stop that arrogant shit. Cut the arrogant out. For arrogance sure. is a defense mechanism. Right, 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 right. We become arrogant because we actually insecure. Mm, wow. And we create this puffer. Right, yeah. So people don't see the real us. Right, 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 right. You know, There's a lot of suckers with pistols. Right, definitely. For sure. But the for pistols sure. give them a confidence that they know that their hands don't got. Definitely. Wow. So you let that go, man. Be who you are. They're going to love you for you. Not for the fakeness. You gonna last. Uh -huh. They gonna knock that other nigga down. Right, 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 right. Definitely. You get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, so be sir. you, man. And, and, and OG told me, man. You know we get our best games from Knox. Definitely. You know I say saying? that all the time. Man, we get the best game I, from I, Knox. I, I, I say that all the time. We That's where best, all my games man, come from. Man, we get from, the nigga. best game from Knox, man. And and, and 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 OGs, man. Um, nigga told me one day, he said, man, hey, take it easy. And if that came easy, take it again. Right. And that's what I would tell me, man. Right, right. For real. For sure. Executive era. Uh, that's that's a label you starting or yes, media? We got, a, like we got a branding. We got a marketing and management company. Um, my cousin Doe, man, is a... This dude is somebody, man, who I've looked up to since I was 13, 14 years old. And he's only a few years older than me. But, you know, when we're young, some of our relatives jump off the porch a little earlier. Mm-hmm. So if you 15 and your cousin 19, but he been in the game. Since he was 12. Since he was 10 <laughs> and 12, and he hella experienced, hella won't won't. You're like, damn, cuz, you really hell on this business, like, you know what I'm saying? Um, in this respected area. And uh, I just reached out to him one day and I was like, cuz, you don't ever feel like the game, the closing in on you? Like, you don't get tired of that shit? Right, right, right. He was like, cuz I really do though, man. I'm trying to do something different. And I was just like, bro, why reinvent the wheel? If you got a relative, bro, that, you know what I'm saying, that's doing something, let's just come together. Uh -huh. The greatest ways of championships nowadays is partnerships. Uh -huh. We better together. Uh -huh. And we just set up, man, come on, let's do it. And we've been putting it together. We've been putting the paint where it ain't. We got the... Uh, the printing, the pressing company, the marketing company, um, the admin stuff for all the artists that need to get their admins going. Mm -hmm. They publish it and all that. Like we got a whole a whole team of folks that's getting cats. Like you may have a check out there that you don't even know you have mm -hmm. for some old stuff that you didn't did. Right, 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 right. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? So we we teaching that side of the game. And um, man, Cuz just really came in the clutch, man, and really like, let's go, let's go to work, and and, and we just trying to continue to keep opening up doors. Um, we're actually, I think the first project that we're going to put through that is the Unk and Fab show. Uh -huh. Um, speaking of Unk, um, I commend you on that. I, um, I follow Unk and I, um, I, I know Unk and, um, I salute you, man. And Unk always say it himself. He's a living testament. Unk was fucked up at a time. Um, real fucked up. And, um, I always see him highlight that, um, how he was fucked up, but, Fucking with you, you know, he's seeing shit that he probably would have never saw, um, and 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 just just for that, bro, you know, a lot of people don't do that. Like, you know, they kick you when you down. They sure. definitely kick you when you down. And I see you trying to implement him in a lot of shit you do. And um, I just want to salute you for that, bro, because um, like I said, Unk is a living, definitely a living testimony, and um. Because of people like Unk, you know, we got the game we got. You get what I'm saying? Um, you know, uh, what, like you just said a couple of minutes ago, Knox, best game game shooters in the world. Best, best, best game shooters in the world. And that's why I learned 95% of my game from just being around them OG heads. And, um, yeah, I want to salute you on Unk, bro, because Man. at the end of the day, you, you, you know, you, you got him leveled. You Unk, got him leveled. Unk remind me of my dad. 
Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, um, my dad died from, you know, heroin, heroin use, mm -hmm. shooting up needles. And I feel like if I had an opportunity to be him to live and see me where I am now, our relationship would be like me and Unc relationship. We go around the world, shooting it, having fun, and to watch him live out some of his things, like, you know, him being who he is, he still got a young nigga mind frame for all the years that he was, you know, when it, when it comes to certain situations. And then other situations, he's so far advanced. And he's helped, uh, as much as I've helped the notoriety or whatever, his self-esteem, whatever that means, he's helped me tremendously as well mm -hmm. of just being patient and understanding, man, no matter what you go through, it ain't over. Mm -hmm. No matter how difficult it is, it ain't over. Right. You know what I'm saying? It ain't right. over. Right. Nigga, you got air, you got action. Right. Always got a second chance. For real. Somewhere. So just keep pushing it. And to all of the unks out there, man, I want to say to my OGs and all of my folks out there, whatever you going through right now, don't let that define you. I'm a big believer in where you are is not who you are. You might just be in a dark place right now, but you're not a dark person. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You're just going through something. And as you said, niggas love to kick niggas when they down. I never want to be one of them niggas that be known for that. I'm never the Hell nigga no. who going to flaunt the money. Who gonna, That shit don't define me. Hell no. Definitely not. Definitely. You feel me? So... You know, big shout out, Unk, Unk ass somewhere. Over, over, he probably nodding off asleep or somewhere. You up? <laughs> Do your podcast. <laughs> What's up? Five man? years from now, man. We're, we're five. Where we see five at? Honestly, blood. I want to run for mayor. I told you that hella long ago, nigga. I told you that definitely. I salute that. You got my vote for sure, for sure. At forty-five years old, I feel like uh, I think I would be fully removed from the attachments of what I'm identifying with now as far as just certain things that that would prevent me from doing that. I would be getting out all the other shit that I, you know, you know, the childhood shit that I want to do still, the the oh, let me show, let me get this, let me, oh, they gonna, oh, they gonna yeah, be mad at yeah, me. Yeah. That shit is I'm done with that. Like you feel me? I'll be off that. Right, right, right. Um, right. and I'd be ready to focus and relearn uh new information that could be uh plentiful for my folks and for my people. And I feel like I could I would really do that. And if not, you know, running for mayor, at least having some uh enough influence to determine what's going on in our area. Um, but I also want to, I'm building a school uh -huh. next year, summer 2023. Uh, the ultimate goal is to have the Dope Air Academy. Uh -huh. And uh, and it's going to teach everything from like this, podcast to communications, financial literacy, uh, finance, uh, real estate, computer coding, all of the things that they don't teach you in school right, right, that actually right. help the children. Definitely. And the age limit is going to be 5 to 25. Definitely. So we going, you know what I'm saying? That's definitely, you know, the goals. Those are the goals. Definitely. Um, I appreciate you coming and sitting down with me. Um, anytime you need to use my platform, it's yours. Um, anything you need to promote, hit me. Come on, pull up to this motherfucker. Let's blow this shit up. You feel me? Um, let's talk about the um, executive era. You know, see if y'all can help my my platform For in sure. some type of way. Uh, let's keep this shit rolling, man. It's a new day. It's a new age. You feel me? Um, you know, we only getting older, but we getting wiser. So, you know, we got to figure shit out. So, man, like I said, I thank you. I appreciate you. Took your ass long enough. I had to <laughs> call and threaten this nigga. You know what I mean? Tell this nigga I was about to drop a diss song and shit. But no, for real, um, I needed this conversation too because it, um, it helped me a lot. You feel me? And uh, it definitely gave me a better understanding of you. So um, I appreciate you. Like I said, anytime you need to come, pull up. Let's fuck with it. Let's get this shit done. Before we done, I want to commend you. I want to commend you on not being afraid to show what you're going through. Mm. Um, the Tinter Tantrum song, Temper Tantrum song, exonified that and mm -hmm. exemplified that of I'm going through something. Yes, I'm mad at Gazi. Yes, I'm yes, I'm this. I'm I'm but I'm okay with that. Right, 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 right. I'm not dissing. I'm not 
this is how I feel. Right. And right. I'm going through this. And it ain't saying fuck you. Right. It's I'd rather tell you how I really feel and you know that instead mm -hmm. of me playing charades and fucking around with you. Right. But even after that, it creates a dialogue. Mm -hmm. And for you to step into that diaphragm, to have that dialogue, that shows a lot of growth. Right, 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 um, right. You know, your brother raised me on 45th. Mm -hmm. I remember my mama, my mama damn near whipped out a pistol on them. <laughs> this true story, sort of God. Um, and she told Freddie, she said, do not sell my son drugs. Right, 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 right. Like, I'm willing to die for him. Mm. Like, do not. And she came to Freddie and was like, I'm entrusting you with my son. So anytime that I'd be on 45th, even thinking about getting a bundle, that nigga be like, mm -hmm. Right, right. It's like, not your lane. Nigga, nigga, watch out. Nigga, go to the hoop court. Nigga, right. go to the studio. Nigga, go fuck with some bitches. Nigga, right, get, right. nigga not over here. Right, right. Nigga, right. I'm not even finna allow it. And um, even when he was going through what he was going through and going through what he's going through, right. I always have the utmost respect for him. For sure. My relationship with you will always have uh, an open door of communication to where right. if we if we ain't feeling each other, it's going to be like, bro, hold on, let me highlight you, bro. Right, right, Because right, it ain't right. fuck you. Right, right, right. It's like, bro, I just ain't feeling that. Definitely. And we got to holler about, and that's the beauty of it. Right. I commend you, bro. I commend your growth. I commend your platform. And I commend your openness. You know what I'm saying? Right, 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 right. Your openness as a man. Right. Because that tough guy shit is defense mechanisms. For sure. Definitely. When a nigga Definitely. open about nigga, that's what I'm going through, bro. I'm yeah. fucked. I'm stressed out, nigga. Right, 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 right. That's what a real man is. Yes, sir. On some Stanley DeLary shit, man. This shit is beautiful. Yes, sir. I appreciate you. For real. Yes, sir. For real. Love. Third.